Yeah, but that's kickboxing, you yeah. know. That's 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 mixed martial arts, you know. That's fighting sports. You can get knocked out in the last second, and uh, he knocked me out, and he did a great job. But it was only motivating, you know. Everything. When I have a loss like this, I get very motivated because yeah. I want to prove myself soon and again and hard. So. You were going through a strange period that year in 2006 because you fought Ruslan Karayev in Osaka. Yeah. First time you fought him. Yeah. Again, a very controversial contest. Yeah. And then backstage, you went crazy. You, yeah. wrecked it, you started smashing signs in the, the change room and you went nuts backstage. What was going through your mind there? Uh, I'm not, maybe I have some uh, strange uh, thinkings in my head, you know. I'm not always, uh, my head is not always uh, thinking straight, you know. Uh, and uh, at that moment, uh, I was just, uh, I don't know, just crazy, you know. Still am sometimes, make too much mistakes. Do you have any idea where it stems from, Butter? Like a lot of the anger that you've displayed in your career, you know, like the situation in Osaka, like the situation with Remy in the final of the Grand Prix, yeah. the situation with Hezdi Jerjes. Yeah. It, it seems to be a lot of, a lot of anger. Do, yeah. you, do, you, do you know where it comes from? Is no, it part I'm, of your life where it no, comes from? No, I'm looking, I'm looking for it, you know, because I know this, uh, the way this, go, this is going is not good. So uh, I, I had to make changes, you know, j that's why I took my year off also. Uh, I don't know, I'm just very filled up with uh, hate, you know, and when I fight opponents, I really want to hurt them, you know, and I really hate them. So uh, I don't know, but... Did something happen to you when you were younger? That was I don't know, you? I don't remember. I'm yeah. maybe schizophrenic, so... <laughs> 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 no, I don't know, you know. I had, I had a normal youth, you know, uh, maybe, uh, I don't know, I really don't know, St still looking for it, you know. You don't see a sports psychologist or anything like that? No, if I do that, I think, I'll, I, I think I'm really crazy, you know. I already think that I'm not 100%, so for me it's difficult. But uh, we'll see, you know, time will tell. I'm getting a little bit, I, I think I'm in balance now, you know, uh, so we'll see. Of all the, I mean, all the great moments are there to see, but of all the bad moments in your in-ring career, and you look at them and they stand out, it's mostly Remy and Hesdi. Yeah. When you watch both of those events, you watch them back, yeah. do you regret it? What goes through your mind when you watch them? If you were to watch it now on the, on, on the TV, yeah. you and I sit here, what's going through your mind? First of all, when you watch the Remy fight and what happened in the 2008 Grand Prix final? Yeah, I think that I'm, I did stupid, you know. Uh, Remy, I gave him... Uh, I gave him an easy victory, you know. Has the uh, the same. Uh, they both become uh, world champion uh, by my uh, by my uh, mistakes. So I give I I give it to them like a present. But I don't regret, you know. It's a fight. Mm -hmm. We're fighters, so uh, I don't think we have to think about it a lot. We just uh, have to go on, you know. And those guys have they know what what they're coming to do, you know. They come to fight, and it's a fight, and things happen in fights. So, you know, just go forward. What about Semi Schult in the final of uh, 2009? Yeah. Do you feel you made a mistake by rushing in too hard and heavy on Semi and you gave him the opportunity to, to beat you? Yeah, people say that, you know, but if my gloves hit him at the right moment, uh, he, he, then it's finished, you know, then I win that fight and everybody's like, buddy, yeah, man, that guy's great, you know, so it's, uh, it's talk after the fight, you know, it's always easy. But I think uh, the fight went, he did a good job, he stayed calm. Uh, I think in his first, first fight uh, with him uh, that I knocked him out, he made a mistake by trying to brawl with me. Yeah. Uh, I think that's never a good idea for a fighter to do with me. But, uh, and I think in the second fight he stayed very calm and tried not, not to uh, get mixed up with me and just uh, keep his distance and, uh, and he did well. So I think also the difference was for me, uh, I fought Elster in the second fight and that for me was a final, you know. There was so much emotions involved in that fight. and. Uh, I was concentrated on him, and I think Sam Shield was concentrated on me. Yeah. Uh, so uh, we, everybody just met everybody at the right moment, and he met me on the right moment. So I think, uh, you know, that, that's a tournament, you know. It's a moment, uh, depends, you know. You took a year off, self-imposed exile from the sport. What did you do over that year? How did you uh, try and overcome the difficulties you'd experienced uh, after the Hesdi fight? Yeah, of course, after the Hesdi fight, I was... Uh, I was a little bit shocked by myself, you know, because I made the mistakes uh, two, uh, two times in, in, in like a year. And I was like, you know, hey, well, well, what's wrong with me, you know? And, uh, but I, I felt big at that moment, you know? I felt like uh, I, I was the rules, you know? Because I was butter. Uh, I could fill up a whole arenas, you know? I, I know everybody was coming for me, you know? I, I, I knew that promoters needed me. I knew that television needed me. Uh, you know, I was, a big, I was a big name in the game, so uh, at that moment I was really like, you know, I don't care about 
what I do because I knew everything I did I can I can go off with it without getting punished you know but when I made that fight against uh, that, that uh, fight against Hazdi and I did that mistake I was like okay you know this is this is not good you know I have to I have to think of what's wrong and I have to think about how to change this that it, that it won't happen again so I took a year off just relaxing you know I didn't train for like six months just went uh, on a holiday uh, went to Morocco for like six months just thinking uh, not 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 start not, not not busy with fighting not busy with nothing just fight busy with myself and who I am and how, how those things happen and uh, I, I knew why, why 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 it happened and you know came back start training and just beginning where I left it you know you spent quite a bit of time in Morocco, yeah. and we saw some of the Moroccan fans in, in Lyon that yeah. had travelled over to watch you, and they're, they're pretty crazy, they're passionate, they love you. Yeah. But I hear that when you walk around the streets of Morocco, you are mobbed. I hear they try and pull you out of the car just to, just to touch you in yeah. your Morocco. How crazy is it over there? We have very much of a temperament, you know, uh, Moroccan people, so of course they go, they go wild, you know, where they see me, a lot of respect, a lot of love. Uh, yeah, it's big. It's big, you know, and it's even big. With, even if television not shows it, you know, internet is a big, yeah. big thing now around the world. You know, Facebook, all those kind of things. So, uh, well, just on that point, we have some statistics here. Yeah. Looking at, uh, at at YouTube and Google hits, yeah. you look up the Muhammad Ali highlight, it has forty thousand five hundred and nine views. Yeah. You look at David Beckham highlights, twenty one thousand six hundred and sixty. Yeah. And you look at Butter Hurry highlight from 2009, yeah. 1.5 million yeah. views. The internet's pretty crazy, and a lot of those hits come from Morocco. Yeah. Is it hard though dealing with fans that are that passionate? Because you are the biggest star in Morocco. Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy sometimes, you know. But you know, I'm a, I love it. You know, I'm a fan guy. You know, I love to give the fans where they are. You know, I'm a people's champion. You know, I, I didn't win any, any K1 belt, but I'm more popular than any K1 fighter around the world, you know. So, uh, of course, I enjoy that. You know, I give them a lot of love, and I always have time to make pictures and talk with people, and we're the same. So uh, it gives me a lot of motivation, and, you know, like last, you know, if I see those, uh, if I see the venue uh, filled up like this with all the Moroccan flags and all the people going crazy, you know, I feel like uh, Trinidad in his time, you know, when he was fighting for <laughs> yeah. Rico and everybody yeah. was so uh, of course it's, it's it's great you know what about your relationship with the Moroccan royal family I yeah. believe you're close friends with the prince you've trained yeah. with the prince of Morocco yeah. is that right yeah tell me a bit about that experience yeah it's good we have a good uh, relationship you know have you met the king uh, have you been inside the palace yeah <laughs> uh, it's a, it's a nice palace. <laughs> I, I would change it up for my own home, so uh, it's, it's good. You said you wanted to, uh, you wouldn't look at mixed martial arts, you'd rather look at boxing. Yeah. And I believe you might be even heading to the States at some stage later this year to yeah. train with Freddie Roach, is yeah, that right? Yeah, yeah. Tell me a bit about your thoughts towards maybe getting into pro boxing. Yeah, I, I really like boxing, you know. I watch a lot of boxing fights. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm looking forward uh, for every title fight, you know. I'm. Uh, uh, I'm, a, I'm a huge fan of uh, Manny Pacquiao, you know, he's a, he's a great fighter, you know, uh, but uh, also the same, you know, I like uh, Floyd Mayweather, he's, 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 a, he's one of the great fighters, you know, but I go back, you know, I like uh, uh, Roy Jones, you know, I like uh, Antonio Tavo, you know, I'm, I'm just a boxing fan and uh, I just uh, really look forward, you know, I want to make some uh, connects, uh, you know, maybe uh, send a mail, you know, to Freddie Roach, just say, I come to the States, maybe I can train a little bit in his gym, uh, maybe, you know, he can teach me something, so I'm re really looking forward for that step, uh, so now he knows, you know, that, uh, that I will be visit him soon. I I'm a really boxing fan, and uh, maybe uh, I'm 26 now, so uh, maybe it's old, maybe not, but, you know, fighting is in my thing, boxing is something I can do very good, so... Uh, yeah, you never know, you know. There was a rumour going around also that you were maybe looking at participating in the Olympic Games yeah. boxing for Morocco. That was a true rumour? Yeah, that was a true rumour. We were really busy with that. You know, I'm, I'm, more, I'm more motivated, you know. Uh, I'm a pro, you know. Yeah. So, uh, of course, if you win an Olympic medal, it's, it's one of the biggest things. Maybe the biggest uh, thing you can have in your life. But, you know, there are a lot of fighters who didn't win a, a gold medal in, in boxing and they, they become very great in the professional boxing, you know. So, uh, I'm, I'm more uh, interested in, in professional boxing, you know. Here's a trivia question for you. Can you name the one K1 fighter who has gone from K1 to box in the Olympic Games? Can you guess who it is? It's actually one of your past opponents. 
Yeah, dog finding. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Interesting, yeah. you know that. Not many yeah. people do. I know. Yeah. I do my homework. When <laughs> you I, do? <laughs> when, I, when I fight people. I yeah, thought I was going to yeah. have you on that one for no, sure. No, no, no. I do my homework, you know. When I fight people, I, 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 look, I look a lot of fights of them, you know, go to his past. You know, I try to, I try to become one of my opponents, you know, try to live him, uh, looking for the bad habits, uh, the mistake they make from, from the beginning, you know. So uh, that's why I knew it, you know. But what sort of image are you trying to portray to the fans, both in the arena and on television? Because over the years, there's been conflicting images of you. There's been the pumped-up entrances with Mike and Melvin. There's been the more placid entrances with different music. And once you even sported a T-shirt that said Gwyneth Forever, Gwyneth, of course, being a very famous criminal figure here in Amsterdam. I'm not trying to send a message, you know. Uh, you know the the the, the thing what you, what we're talking about happened uh, a long time ago now, you know. And uh, I was still I was still young, you know. People forget uh, the last uh, five years of my career uh, were like uh, uh, 50 years of, of a normal life, you know. Yeah. I made a lot of things ups, downs, left, right. It was like a roller coaster, you know. So of course you made mistakes along the way, and you're not happy with them. Uh, that was one of that, you know. But I'm just I'm just I'm just a sports guy, you know. I just like fighting and. Uh, I just like kickboxing. I, just, I want people to see me, you know, like like a sportman, and uh, you know, I'm just trying to get to be a to be a, to be a big a big name in, in the thing I do, you know. So that's it. Still to come on the Voice versus Butter Hurry, we'll play that time-honored game of knockout, chokeout, wedgie, or a bowl of fried shrimp. But coming up next, you know, it doesn't take much to flip Butter Hurry switches, especially don't park in his spot. White tea, platinum link on me. I got a little bit of cheese, all drinks on me, but mommy gotta do something, no drink. Welcome back to Amsterdam and The Voice versus Bada Hurry. A friend of mine from Australia trained at Mike's gym early this year and told me a pretty interesting story about a man who wrongly parked in Bada Hurry's spot with some pretty hefty consequences. Let's find out if that story is indeed true. True or false? Someone here at the gym once parked in your parking spot and you punched in their window and pushed their car into a ditch? Hmm. True. So just a warning in Amsterdam, if you come to Mike's gym here, do not park no, no, it in Butter Harry's parking spot. It was not like this. I, par I parked my car, but he, he parked uh, uh, behind me, so I couldn't, couldn't get my car out. So I was like, you know, who's the owner of the guy? And there was no, there was no owner, so just... So I do my research too. I've got spies yeah, everywhere yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, you I'm, won't find I'm sweating. On the internet. I'm sweating, I'm sweating. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> True or false again, you once joked that you owned a window in the red light district. No, never. False. <laughs> Damn it, we're going there tonight. Yeah. Oh, I can't get the hook up from no, you, brother. Just have oh, to pay, just have to pay. <laughs> yeah. Who's but a hurry away from the ring? What do you do in your spare time? Do you have hobbies? Yeah, I like the movies. What's your favourite film? At this moment? Yeah. Torn. 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 Torn? Thor, yeah, 3D. Oh, Thor? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You liked it? Yeah. He's an Australian. I know. He's, no, a, good, he's a good actor. You enjoy it? You yeah. enjoy it? Why? Did no, maybe crazy, because I like those kind of movies, you know. I like superpowers. Yeah. And uh, sometimes I'm like a little kid, you know, just... I just, I just like the movies, uh, you know. Get my 3D glasses on and just <laughs> relax, you know. Put my popcorn and... Tell me about this. Yeah. Is it a birthmark? Yeah. It is? Werewolf. <laughs> Does it give you special powers? Yeah, maybe, I don't know. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> My aggression. No, it's just a birthmark. I, 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 I was... Uh uh, I have it since my birth. Uh, last couple of years, uh, there, there's uh, hair growth, but uh, since I was small, I remember I have it. Doesn't hurt you at all if it gets no, hit or no, anything? No, no, no. It's just no, there? Yeah, just... Okay. I, I don't see it, so most yeah. of the time I, don't, I forget it. Do you know who this guy is? No. Anderson Silva? Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. You watch any I, of these? No, no. I know him, I know him by name. Uh, Do you watch much mixed martial arts? No, not, not, not at all. You realize this guy's a former Muay Thai stylist, or he's a Muay Thai exponent. And a lot of people often ask the question, how would he go in K1? How would he go against someone like Bada Hari? Yeah. But I don't know if you've seen him fight before and you could no. answer.